And we see these things going in all sorts of different directions. Uh, we actually even see one leaving the Earth's atmosphere going out in this direction, which is something, again, impossible for a meteorite or a shooting star or even space debris to do because it, anything leaving Earth's atmosphere requires internal energy, and internal energy requires and, assume, and, and suggests intelligence. So again, what's very disturbing, what's funny about it is, is they can't actually find the mirror because there's so many other things actually moving around out there. This is Mission Control Houston. We are using the payload bay cameras right now to hopefully catch a glimpse of the Russian space station Mir as it performs an on-orbit burn. Though it will be difficult to uh, pick Mir out from the stars as they pass behind us, the uh, payload bay cameras are positioned such that they're looking straight back, back, straight back behind the orbiter where the mirror is flying at about 850 nautical miles behind us. No joy from here, sorry. Hope it was a good one, though, for our friends. Thank you, sir. We could not see it here either. We'll wait two or three more minutes till sunrise, and then uh, at that time give you a go for KU Stow. We're to mission lapse time of seven days, 13 hours, and 17 minutes. This is Mission Control, Houston. The uh, Mir space station is now visible on the uh, far left-hand side of the screen, about, about an inch from the bottom of this particular picture. Okay, the Mir space station is the small flashing light in the center about an inch from the left-hand side of the screen. It's slowly... Um, it is slowly moving closer to the left-hand side and is a very, has a very light flashing to it. We think, on the middle of the screen, way to the left-hand side. We think you can see a flashing light just a little bit to the left of the center of the screen, very faint. Yeah, we do see something flashing visually, but we're not sure that that might be... Uh This is Mission Control Houston. Once again, we believe we were just able to spot the Mir spacecraft as it flies about at 850 nautical miles behind Discovery. So you just saw the footage. You saw a lot of things streaking out there. You saw the confusion of the astronauts trying to find the space station in Mir. And in the end, they never really find it. Again, if what we're looking at is number, the number one contention of NASA is everything on these videotapes is just debris floating by and we're seeing optical illusions. Do you really think an astronaut can't tell the difference between a space station mirror and a piece of debris, a piece of dust, or, or a cookie crumb floating through space? Of course they can tell the difference. So whatever the other objects are that are moving around out there obviously aren't debris. There are other objects that are obscuring their view and are confusing the astronauts. But even more peculiar to me, the theory that the streaking objects are actually meteorites. If the streaking objects were really meteors, then why do they never appear in this video to burn up and disintegrate into the atmosphere? If they were meteors, they should behave like them. And even more curious, as the shuttle is flying 200 miles above the top of the atmosphere, why are we seeing meteors at all? In theory, they should be invisible dark bodies until they strike the upper atmosphere and start to produce a meteoric burn, making them luminous and clearly visible. But many of these streaking objects are highly luminous way above the top of the atmosphere. Could they be unidentified flying objects? In 1993, I met with and had a casual conversation with the head of the Russian space program. He didn't speak English. But through an interpreter, a young Russian woman, I asked him if the Russian cosmonauts had ever seen UFOs. 
He laughed but answered my question. We have never seen anything like that. If the cosmonauts had seen UFOs, I would be the first one to know about it. But there has been some evidence from the Russian cosmonauts saying they had actually seen flying saucers on recent missions to the Mir. A Russian cosmonaut named Alexander Baladin stated at a UFO convention that flying saucers have come into close proximity to the Mir space station many times. He added there is sufficient evidence to warrant a scientific study of the phenomena and that it is time that world governments officially acknowledge the UFO phenomenon's existence. Baldwin disclosed December 23, 1998, during an international ufology forum in Brazil, that he and fellow cosmonaut Musa Manarov had seen UFOs. During docking operations between his space capsule and the Mir, Baldwin saw a glowing object a short distance away. Could these be the same lights that are being witnessed on this NASA Russian space station Mir sequence? Musa Manarov captured the UFOs on videotape that was shown during the UFO Congress in Brazil. Baladin claimed that the recording and other evidence presented during the Congress must be studied by an international scientific commission. Why were Russian cosmonauts coming forward to tell their stories while American astronauts wouldn't breathe a word? Were the Russian cosmonauts more excited about sharing information on intelligent contact with extraterrestrials and with the world than Americans? So I waited for the answer from Joseph Noose, and considering the fact that Congress was already doing hearings into space shuttle footage, I expected a very, very negative answer, and that's what I got. The letter reads, Dear Mr. Sarita, I did look carefully at the video you sent, and I really must apologize to you for not replying sooner. The objects that were on the video appear to me to be floating debris from the cargo bay of the space shuttle. These objects often appear to be fuzzy because they got quite close to the camera and were often out of focus. Because they were so close, they also appear to travel at high speed, and any minor disturbance within the shuttle environment, for example, outgassing, firing of attitude control thrusters, etc., is magnified enormously, thus the rapid turns. The spotty illumination and shadowing in the bay can also make objects suddenly appear or disappear. I saw a wealth of similar debris come up off the floor and out of many minor crevices during microgravity flights on the KC-135. The space shuttle is a notoriously dirty environment by any laboratory standards. That's why they always close up any shuttle service and buy the shuttle well before it gets too near. This is especially true for satellites such as the Hubble Space Telescope with high precision optics. Again, I do apologize for not responding sooner. Signed, Joe News. The point of philosophy is to start with something so simple as not to seem worth stating, and to end with something so paradoxical that no one will believe it. Bertrand Russell. The alternative space program theory hypothesizes that while NASA is launching the space shuttle and the Apollo missions to the moon, there is a secret, hidden space program that is going on behind closed doors. Deep inside of secret uh, Air Force bases and research labs, black op projects are developing very, very high technology and high space technology vehicles 